Hello, and welcome to the 2020 series presented by the New York Film Academy. The 2020 series are creative conversations with visionaries about craft, creativity, and collaboration. They're like the three legs of the stool. Um, we'll do 20 minutes of shop talk and 20 minutes of answering questions from you guys, the global audience. So please definitely write in. We'll try to get to these questions. I'm Liz Hinline. I'm a creative director and filmmaker at New York Film Academy. And I am so thrilled and excited to have this brilliant, brilliant photographer who's also just a genius artist. Hugh Kreshmer, would you please show up? Hey. Hi, Liz. Hi, Hugh. Hi, thanks for having me. I really appreciate oh it. You know, so audience, so I looked at all your, you know, I didn't look at all your work, but you sent me, you know, this huge document of, of a slideshow that you put together that you're going to so nicely share with us. And it just is, I mean, two things. I'm just astounded by your creativity and your technical ability. Mm. And not necessarily those are two things that go together all the time. Did you, um, were you just a natural? No, uh, I mean, I don't know, natural, but I had, you know, such, such support from my parents, my, my father, and I'll show you some of his work, uh, was a, um, he was a uh, photo instrumentation engineer. And then on my mother's side, she was an artist. So I had the problem solving from my father and then the artistic, uh, you know, direction from my mother. So I, I was able to combine those two together in my work. Um, and it was just directly from them. And, so. and just before, I mean, it's a, br a brilliant um, presentation you have, but I do want to, I'm really curious, what was it about photography that you said, ah, this is my home? When the, my dad took all of us, seven kids, all of us at the age of 13 into the dark room, he had one in the back of the house and we showed us how to expose our film to process our film and then to make prints. And when that first print I made came up in the developer, I thought, this is really what I wanna be doing. It was that moment, that's what I wanna do. And I scheduled my entire life around that from there on. And, and how old were you then? 13. 13. And did your other six siblings, did they also have a light bulb that just popped out? Not for them. It was, I was the one, I was the fifth child. Mm. And I really, I really feel that the reason why my dad did it is so that he could have someone to talk to about shop talk, right? And he, you know, after that, he would invite me into his office and we would talk about the heydays of, you know, mm. what he did and whatnot, you know. That is fabulous. Were, were you, before, were you the expected one that was going to shine to that? No, I think it was trial and error, you know. I, I don't think I had, I mean, I really didn't show any artistic ability or didn't, we didn't connect to it mm -hmm. um, until that time. Um, but, you know, I would, I would build things as a kid mm -hmm. and mostly around pyrotechnics, you know, making, making weapons that could throw fire. You know, that was my thing. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to be like an espionage guy. Like kind of, yeah. So, um, yeah, I learned, I learned craft by, you know, uh, by need, basically, mm. you know, so mm -hmm. come up with an idea and then find a way to make it happen. So, and, um, and where, where do you, where do your ideas come from? Or, or do you work at that? Or is it, are they just sort of pop into your brain from the universe? You know, it's all sorts of different influences. I mean, from a piece of paper, I mean, one time I was in inspired by a piece of paper I found on a street in New York City to going to the Metropolitan Museum and being inspired there, you know? So it comes from just a, life, a lifetime of, of seeing and observing. Mm -hmm. I really think so. Um, but, you know, during that, during that, you know, as I'm viewing or my life is unfolding, I know what I like and what I don't like. So, um, you know, so whatever I like, I tend to be influenced by that. You know. Well, so then, then you're, as, as you're seeing more things, you are honing what you, you know, that, that, that decision oh, sure. process. It, it sounds like funny, like when one's working with clients, it's always easier to find out what they don't like. 
Absolutely. And sometimes those jobs go on forever because they can't tell you what they like. They just know through trial and error what they don't like. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, no. oh. Let, let's look at the artistry and 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 um because I really want to see your work and I love to look at it. So Charlie, can we start uh, the slideshow por favor? Thank you. Thanks, Charlie. So let's go to the next slide. This is my father's work I was talking about. Um, so Charlie, can you go to the next one? So he was a photo instrumentation engineer for NASA and he was tasked with this mission, he called it, to bring the space experience into our living rooms during this time. So he designed this shot using mathematics basically and they, they shaped a lens which was basically a, a portal between the camera and the engine compartment. It was eight inches of optically clear quartz that was shaped to get this angle. And then he used a high speed motion picture camera of take, of capable of taking 44,000 frames a second of film. So, you know, this is like he said, the, the only way we got man on the moon was through mathematics. And that's where, you know, so being raised by him, learning about problem solving, uh, so I got that from him on that side of my family. And I go to the next slide. Um, and then on my, on my mother's side, she introduced me to fine art and particularly the 20th century, um, early 20th century painters. So these are some movements that, that I gravitate towards. And you'll see, you know, the thread between my work and what you're seeing here throughout my career. So let's, let's thumb through these, Charlie. A little bit. So this is Dada, Cubism, of course, <clears throat> just George Brock's work. Next slide, the Bauhaus School of Design. Uh, this is A.M. Cassandra's work, I, who I, my favorite illustrator, designer. Mm. You know, Joseph Cornell, Russian constructivism. And then Rene Magritte. So, so, so I'm gonna stop here at Constructions. So after I graduated art school, uh, my work looked like everyone else's that went to that school. And I found out the hard way by going to my first interview with an art director and he, three pages into it, he goes, when did you graduate from Art Center? And I thought, how am I going to establish relationships with these art directors when they're already using people that do this type of work? How do I separate myself from the rest of the pack? And at that same time, I listened to Ian Summers, who was a motivational speaker for the industry. And he talked about shooting what you love and then, you know, the money will come. Well, that was his. And so I, so using what I learned from my father about problem solving and my mother's uh, introduction to early 20th century painting, I worked on this particular series of works here. You, so go to the next slide. These are all, uh, commissions. Um, this first one is for an album cover. And these are done on a on a light table. So um, this is film time. Yeah, you can get thumb through these. And so what the table, so all the objects are on the ta light table. There's a large format camera above it with a wide angle lens. And the, the light coming through the table takes away the, the shadow from the key light. And then I go and it visually flattens the objects together. And then I go in with airbrushing and tone out, you know, do the tone and, and whatnot. And no one had ever seen anything like this. And I had no idea what audience would, you know, how is this gonna work for me? And, you know, so I'm taking a huge gamble on this <clears throat> and it just, it just worked out. So, you know, I had no idea. And, and then slowly but surely I began to get work and these are all commissions. So some editorial work, or advertising work. So and then after all, about, uh, what's that? These are, all, these are all live objects, is that correct? Yeah, there's a combination of collage. Yes, it's all live, it's all done in front of the camera. This is, you know, cut out photographs with objects. They take about, they took about two weeks to do them. So, you know, from start to finish. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and, you know, so then after about five years of doing this, I began to see the end of it and 
began to change my thinking. Um, this particular stop right there. That let's go back a little bit, Charlie, if you don't mind. So this this was the transition. Go go back to so you know they wanted me to do that original style, but this is about this is for Travel and Leisure magazine. This is about um, a Victorian age travel writer. And so I thought, no, I don't think that's going to fit. That style is not going to fit well. Let's do something around Victorian etching. So that's, mm -hmm. so I'm beginning to think differently, right? Mm -hmm. And my approach is beginning, is, is changing too. These are done in the, in the dark room. These are co combining multiple negatives in the dark room. So none of this is Photoshop? No, no, this is all Fair. before Photoshop. So now you can progress, Charlie. Let's go up to process. So I'm, you know, start with, uh, I mean, my career is mainly around editorial work. So I have to communicate my ideas to my art directors. So let's go to the next slide. So I've, I've managed to get pretty good at sketching on ideas, not entirely great, but anyway, um, they help me communicate my idea to my art directors, but they're also, I use them on set as a schematic for my mm -hmm. approach. So this just gives you an idea. Um, you know, and here's a, here's a, you know, here I am working with Polaroid now, um, yeah. film. And the, the, eventually this is gonna be brought into Photoshop and assembled together, but on set, I need some sort of visual, bef this is before digital capture and, you know, using a monitor. Um, so using Polaroid to kind of figure out how the illusion is gonna work is on the left side here. So they're, they're kind of spliced together. <clears throat> Go to the next one. So that's, that's the result. Um, wow, that's so yeah. great. And uh, I have no idea where the ideas come from, to be honest with you. Uh, this is a very simple approach. She's basically, the, there's a hole cut into the set and she's popped out like a, like a marmot <laughs> out of the hole. Um, but I use, you know, and I, I make my own props and build my own things. And that's part of the joy that I get, you know, is building these things. Or if I can't do it, I'll hire someone. You can go to the next one, Charlie. Okay, just, just thumb through these a little bit, yeah. So. Well, what do you find though in, in nowadays when it's a much quicker turnaround necessary that you have to hire out people or you have to bring on a team just to get it, get the project? Uh, it depends, it depends on the budget. You know, if it's editorial, mm -hmm. I'm pretty much doing it on my own, you know, with maybe the help of an assistant, but if it's an ad gig, you know, we have got a team of people, prop makers, mm -hmm you know, set builders, um, you know, producers, everything else. So, um, so it depends, but, but the thing about it is, you know, learning how to do this on my own, I can better direct a prop maker on how to, mm -hmm. how I want it to look, you know, so I've experienced that already, you know. Um, so I want to talk a little bit <clears throat> about this process. Let's go to the next slide. <clears throat> Collage assemblages. These are what you just saw and what you're going to see now are, done in front of the camera. So these, go to the next slide. These are, these are created using cutout photographs that are reassembled and put back into the set. So this is <clears throat> done with using very little Photoshop. <clears throat> and I do, and why do, and people ask me, why do you do it that way? And it's because uh, of, first of all, the joy that I get of doing it, the challenge of doing it, but there's also something very tactile and different mm -hmm. about them. Um, so just maybe just thumb through these a little bit, Charlie. You know, I don't, and, and quite frankly, there is a big reason why I don't do so much Photoshop. I get, I can't stand it. I can't stand in front of the computer too long. You know, right. my eyes go wiggy and uh, my back hurts, whatnot. Um, but that's personal. Uh, so when you're the, putting, you know, the, go ahead. When you're putting these together, so like set example for this one, can you mm -hmm. just quickly like because this is a, is a one idea thing. What what's the combination of things that go together to make this? Okay, 
So this is a job for GQ magazine. It was an article about a guy that gave up lying for 30 days and he wrote about it and he actually lived, okay? And um, so I, I get the manuscript, I read the manuscript, I, I pull points out of the manuscript and then come up, formulate an idea around it. So I thought about this Pinocchio mask that's hung up on a wall, right? So after it's been approved, I photographed, this is my assistant. Uh, we used a special effects makeup artist who attached that prosthetic, photographed him with a large format camera in the lighting that I know is going to work. And so I have to match the lighting on him that I know is going to sh I'm going to be using on set. Mm -hmm. It's very, very important to make this work. Cut out, the, so I could make the large prints, cut out the prints um, and, you know, I also, so there's a print in front and then there might be a, a bit of print in the back to make it look three dimensional. Mm -hmm. And then I place it back into the set and re-photograph it with a large format camera. Does that explain enough to you? I guess, how are you getting, how are you getting him to protrude? Like the three dimensionality is coming from your original photograph, basically? Right. So it's that this is where the sketch comes in. It gives me an idea of how it's going to work and I plan mm -hmm. things, right? So again, the lighting has to match on the original, on, on him that I'm gonna be using eventually. And the sketch that I do gives me an idea, previews how I'm going to approach it, right? So I knew that the, the, the wall that I had to look down the wall rather than flat against it in order to gain the shadow. Right. And, um, you know, and had to arrange the print in a way with matching with the lighting to get this shadow that really is the defining element that gives that three-dimensional quality to it, even though shadow it's- Shadow and, and the interior of the mask, which is brilliant. That's right. That's a little extra piece of skin photograph that's attached to that corner of the cutout, right? And then I use a, a large format camera that has tilt shift capability. So I mm -hmm. can foreshorten or the, the focal length a little bit or the, the depth of field a little bit, all right? Brilliant, great. Mm. So, so these are, you know, a variety of different assignments. This, so let me stop here for a second. So this is how much I will go through to get it right. I took this piece of fence up to, this is up in the Sierras and um, set up the fence in this area, photographed and set it up with the camera and, and photographed the fence. Then without moving the camera, took the fence away, photographed the scene behind it, noted where the fence was in relation to the camera, the height, the, you know, the distance and whatnot, the, the dime of day, the aperture of shutter speed, all that stuff. Went back into, back to LA, uh, made a huge print of that scene behind the fence and then mm -hmm. took that and laminated it to the fence. It took about four days to do. Brought the fence back up to that location two weeks later, set it up and then photographed it again. That's so great. And I know, and I, I, it just, there's, but there's, why don't you do it in photo? It's just, you, there's nuances there I can't explain. Mm -hmm. Uh, to it. 100%, 100%. Yeah. I have a, a, a question though, because you mentioned a couple times, this is a little more of a business question about work, you know, art directors and stuff like that. What, and early on in your career, you said, okay, what, doing editorial, what, um, what made you want to go in that direction as a photographer, as opposed to multitude of other directions one could have gone in? Well, it's, um, I mean, towards art, towards editorial? Editorial and, and things like that. Right. Because I, and I think I hope, hopefully this is gonna be a good message for your students is that my approach was to just do the work and then it's gonna find its audience, right? So in other words, do what I love to do and then it'll find its way. And that has always worked for me. 
when I try to do something to get the job or to get that type of work, it's never really worked out for me. So I've let go of that idea. It doesn't work. So I just create work and see where it's going to go. And, it, and my work happened to be to find the audience in the editorial realm more so than advertising. I've done advertising. I've done plenty of advertising. Um, you'll see some of it. Um, but let's go to the next one. So now I'm caught up to where, you know, the work that I'm doing now is more reflective of what's going on here. So these are some, so I'm a photo illustrator basically, and you can stun through these, Charlie. These are all, you know, for the most part, either personal projects or assignments. This is for Fast Company Magazine. And so it's all conceptually oriented. Um, this is for Oprah Magazine on listening to your gut feelings, basically. You know, so I dabble in all sorts of different, you know, this is a fashion spread um, for LA Magazine. <clears throat> That's hysterical. So, so this actually existed downtown at that fashion district, this, this storefront with these mannequins in it. So, and I, in, and the thing is I got these, you know, I didn't get big, you know, big splashy spreads. I got the little odd articles in like small magazine or big magazines mm -hmm. about the, like the random, you know, article, like the guy that gave up lying for 30 days, you know, that was for GQ, right? Um, so those, those are the types of assignments I got. Well, well do you find that because you're doing the, the, you know, let's, uh, more interesting assignments, let's say, or the more offbeat assignments, do you find that they give you more leeway with creativity or they're excited for you to bring yourself or yes. do they have ideas that they want to execute? It depends. Most, you know, during this time, most of the time they would depend on me to come up with the solution. Um, mm -hmm. And it's because I, because it, at that early work, they didn't know how to art direct me. So they really depended on me to coming up with a solution for them. And it just, I've been able to maintain that for the most part through the rest of my career. So they, you know, we collaborate together really well. And even it, this even blows into advertising too now where I'm called in early to help formulate the, the, the ads. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is a, done by a special effects prop maker. Um, his name is Clint Zaccoli. He's here in LA and he made this. This is made from foam and hide and, and fabric and hooves. Um, we started with the head mount and he crafted this whole thing for this shoot. This is for, a, this is for editorial, right? This is for Fortune Magazine. And this thing stood six feet tall. Wow. Yeah, it was awesome. That's amazing. I would love to own that. <laughs> I think it's in his living room without yeah. sawn head, right? 100%. So this is about memory, you know, um, for Popular Science Magazine. Um, I'm going to jump to a question here while we're in the middle of this. Uh, sure. Fahad asks, so what do you like the most about being a photographer? Hmm. I think it's the process for me, you know, and the joy I get out of crafting and creating and challenging myself to get from the idea that's in my head to, you know, the film or, you know, the digital. Some of them, you know, I have a lot of successes, but I have a lot of failures too. So you're, and you'll, you'll never see those. <laughs> And what do you do at, if, if the idea is just like, this is, you know, this could have super, this totally works, but it could have super not work. What do you do, especially if you're working for a client that's paying? Yes. How do you, how do you, how do you navigate that? Especially if you're doing creative work that that's not been done before. Well, the sketch again helps, you know, preview, the approach and if i'm not feeling it if it's not you know if it's not playing out in my head correctly or there's obstacles mm -hmm. or what ifs 
and it becomes too complicated, I may just abandon it and come up with a different idea. Um, so these are these uh, next round are, are basically stories, whether commissioned or not. Um, these are more, you know, series. So go to the next one. So Gastronopolis. So you can see the influence from my love of Fritz Lang's Metropolis. And when I moved to New York, um, I fell in love with the architecture. So I wanted to combine the two together. And this is about a year long personal project. And that the story is, is that this alien lands in Manhattan with not knowing why she's there. And then she ends up eating the city, right? So she's, you'll notice that there's all elements or some elements of culinary uh, arts in this um, combined with, with this kind of deco style. Mm -hmm. um, she, you know, uses her magical powers and whatnot. I wrote a whole script for this. I sent it out to major magazines before I even did these to see if they would fund it, but no one gravitated towards it, but I just did it on my own anyway. So you had to buy her costume, get her makeup done. I may, I, we had a, um, a recent FIT graduate do that, mm. mag, do mm. that um, costume. So I, could, I got a whole team of, of people who donated their time towards this. So she made the costume, I built the props. <clears throat> Right. You know, um, had a producer, makeup artist. So she's yeah, holding right. she's holding a, a, a photograph of the Chrysler building in her mouth, by the way. Oh, interesting. Yeah. And it, see, uh, it, the illusion works because the lighting it just matches, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, that's the way um, that works. Joseph asks, what was your first response to Photoshop and how do you relate to it now? Good question. Um, that's good. That's a good question. I needed a lot of help. Uh, so I took a class at Art Center and then I hired people to show me how to do it. But it took it took years. I, the way I look at it now is um, it is super helpful for my work. Um, I still grab, I do a hybrid of craft and digital manipulation still to this day. Um, uh, I don't entirely depend on it, um, just for my own sanity, to be perfectly honest. But it's a it's an incredible tool. Go to the next one. So another commission. This is for a business magazine. This is about fashionable hedge funds for Bloomberg <laughs> Wealth Manager magazine, right? Who knew? Um, so this is a topiary garden in near Bethesda, Maryland. I love that. Um, Damon asks, your work is astonishing. How much do you think studying with a B for a BA degree theories take part in success for creative photography or is it mostly just the artist's sense? I guess how much, you didn't go to Art Center, could, could you have known how to shape a career? Um, I don't think as accurately or as, as quickly as I was able to with the degree, no. Um, I think, you know, the other thing is that you're communicate, you're involved, you're in that world when you're going to school and, you know, collaborating with people and you're establishing relationships. I mean, as Art Center, you've got, you know, art directors and designers that you are, you know, beginning to establish relationships with. And, you know, I'm sure at, at New York Film Academy that <clears throat> you've got a lot of people, opportunities there to meet with, you, with people who you might be working with or collaborating with in the future, right? So it's, it's very helpful. I mean, you can certainly learn how to do things online these days, but the experience, you can't match the experience of the classroom. Well, so what you don't get as an assistant is you don't get the theory and you don't get the history and you don't get the time, you know, if you're just, if you came up as an assistant, yes, for you could, T definitely make a career from that, but you you you're going to still have to train yourself about the history, about there, because that's what people also with references, you know, everyone. Oh sure. Th that's bantered around naturally. Right. Yeah. Absolutely.
So tell us about these. So this is a, this is a, I had this idea. I was teaching at uh, Santa Monica college and I had this, you know, I don't know where this idea came from, but I was, it's, you know, Ken dolls are kind of cliche these days, but um, the student walked in, I'm like, Oh my God, you look just like a Ken doll. And he was willing to do this. So <clears throat> we, I came up with this idea of this 1963 Ken doll, you know, waking up in modern world and then, you know, going through the perils of being who he is in this modern world. So uh, we shot this, we, we, you know, the props are made to look, you know, big from small objects, I guess, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, everything's again, handmade and whatnot. Um, and then we used uh, uh, perspective control lenses to create the idea of a small world, you know, using, um, tilt shift mm -hmm. um this guy this kid he's a very good looking kid he got so many wolf whistles on that that's a that's a corner of sixth and mateo he got mm -hmm. like all these people driving by woo woo <laughs> it was it was so fun anyway that's a sidebar um yeah Oh, he and I had, you know, I work with this makeup artist, right? This specialist who did, who did that makeup. He did that hair and everything. Makeup's just, amazing. Like yeah, he, he, he looks plastic. He right. looks like a plastic person. Yeah. And I think that's really, it's those details that are so important for me. You know, any other makeup artist may not have been able to do it, but I knew this guy was, was the guy, right? 100%. That's the guy. Yeah. And the shellac, the shellac hair. Yeah. I knew um, he was going to do an amazing job. Uh, Michaela asks, where does most of your budget go towards? Uh, Pre-production, a lot of it. And in, 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 in what categories are you still talking mm, about? Craft, uh, props, you know, you can see it's prop heavy. Look at, look, go to the next slide. So this is a story that had a $6,000 budget and I had very little to work with to make it happen. I had to rent a studio, I had to rent talent or, you know, have talent show up. And we had to pull together this, this concept with using, you know, stuff we found at Goodwill and, you know, you know, changing the color of it and crafting things and whatnot to make it happen. Um, and we shot this. So these are photographed from the camera over the floor of the set and um, that's she's basically on seamless bat on seamless paper lying mm -hmm. on the floor of this of the studio and then I you hired you know how do you make it make it look like a room well you hire someone that's good with chalk and you kind of put those details in so I'm doing a lot of the work for editorial mm -hmm. and whatnot but it's super fun um, Kiara asks, what would you say are the most important equipment for beginner photographers to have? Equipment. Well, it depends on what you're going into, whether it's, you know, um, if you're doing, talking about work like this, you know, a solid camera, you can rent everything else out. You can rent everything, but, um, I mean, I think it's more about what you know and how and what you learn and use those. I think that's more important than the equipment, to be perfectly honest. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I can work with just about any piece of equipment. And in fact, I have some of the oldest equipment known to man right now. <laughs> and it works fine. It's great. Totally. And it's not about that. Let's go back, Charlie, to that one before. Oh, um. And then you will because yeah, this is so inventive, Hugh. So just tell us, and I guess the next slide will also tell us how you put this. Well, together. I can start, yeah. So the, this whole idea started years before I actually did it. I saw, walking through a park in Brooklyn, I saw this plastic bag that was caught into the treetops and was blown on a blustery day and blowing in the wind. I thought, how interesting would it be to have a guy, you know, who's light as a feather, caught up on the wind and then his shirt collar caught up in the trees and he's just enjoying the view while he's blowing in the wind. 
And I wanted to do it practically. So I came up with this whole, you know, scenario of different shots about this blustery day. And I wanted to do it practically where we get a hoist and we bring a guy up to a treetop and I photograph him on a cherry picker and all this other stuff. And it was too much of a liability. So I brought it back to the studio and designed this whole fanciful world that they're in. And it took about three months worth of preparation before the shoot days and um, making the props and everything else. But again, we photographed them with a the camera above the floor of the stage. Um, and that's the way we did this. So does that answer your question? Yeah, that totally does. Yeah. Let's look at Yeah, yeah. so this, here's a set shot to give you an idea of how that works. That's great. You know, and it's all, this is all financed by me. Um, the objective is to, of course, get work from it, but it's still a form of expression for me. And mm -hmm. whether I get the job or not, it's really not as important as the experience. So, uh, you go to the next one. It looks like your crew must have a really good time on your sets. It's a lot of fun. It really is. And my and the way I conduct my shoots is everyone's a participant. Everyone can contribute. It doesn't matter what, you know, what rung of the ladder you're on. Mm -hmm. So that that work that I just showed segues into advertising. So that investment into that particular project garnered me this ad campaign for Huggies. And the art director loved the, I sent him a promo card and he designed this entire uh, campaign around that, right? And for weeks, a couple of months preparation working. Now, I've can, now I can hire the talent to come in and help me out. So I've special mm -hmm. effects, prop makers, crafters, you know, now it's really fun because I've got all these, this team of people helping me out. Totally. Yeah. And it's also so fun to bounce off ideas you know. Oh my gosh. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, Penn and Teller. So this, so this, this gives you an idea of, you know, so knowing that I do things in camera was the reason why I got this job for, uh, Old Spice because this campaign has been is known for doing in front of the camera, even even in the the commercials. So these are all he's wearing all these prosthetics wow. on set, okay? And I'll show you. We'll have some BTS coming up. So they scan him in a three D scanner, um, and then you go to the next slide, and this is what they got. So they got this file of him. And then they made, from this file, they made three identical or a series of mannequins that were of him. And they, for three weeks, they built these prosthetics on the mannequins. Um, and it's, they're so detailed. This is done by New Deal. Um, mm. They do, they did the Batman series miniatures um, and whatnot. Amazing amazing people these are these artisans are just amazing yeah incredible all together so that's how crazy detailed they are so and then this is some a couple from a couple of years ago canon campaign and this now we're getting in a little bit of motion um this is a combination of Video, still photography, and animation. Give that animation. Great, super elegant. Mm. Super elegant. One more. What's next? So we're heading into the wrap up time. Okay, we can stop there. Let's, you want let's stop for a second. This is just because it's, it's, it's amazing and almost overwhelming. Um, Appreciate but it. 
but tell us where so creatively what what what's exciting you now it might not be a specific project but like what ideas are you playing with yeah it is and it isn't um i think right this juncture in my career at my age i've kind of have gone away or gone more towards doing something that has purpose to it right so um I want my work to help make an impact. Uh, you know, to, and now I'm working on a personal project around uh, climate change. And these are constructions, They're, they involve the same process of crafting and, and f photography. And I'm really, really liking uh, what I'm doing with them. And uh, so I'm hopeful that I can benefit a nonprofit devoted to water conservation with these particular set of photographs. And, but, but that, that idea, it's just an evolution of ideas. One idea leads to another, and then that will lead to another idea and so on. I'm just gonna follow that path. That's um, so great. Where, um, so if people wanna see your work or where can they find you on your Instagram or? Instagram, my website, um, mostly what Instagram. Are, what are they, Katie, or Katie's writing them down as we speak. Thank you. Yeah, it's Hugh underscore, underscore. There's my website. Hugh underscore Crutchmer is my um, IG. Instagram. Mm -hmm. IG, yeah. And FB is Hugh Crutchmer straight. <laughs> without, a, <laughs> without an underscore. And a question for you. If you weren't doing, if you weren't a photographer, what would you be doing with your time? Probably painting. I've, I've, I've always like admired painters. You know, and uh, but it, definitely the arts for sure. Mm -hmm. Still, still with the arts, somehow, some way. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing all your knowledge. I know we Ooh, I all lost you. a lot out of it. Um, and we can't wait to see your next work. You can't hear me. I don't know why. That's weird. Can you hear me now? Oh, he. You can't hear me. They can hear me. Oh. <laughs> can you there, hear we there we go. Okay. Might have been my Bluetooth. I apologize. No problems, but that's you live TV. Question again? Thank you for being here. We can't we can Oh, thank you. Work. It's awesome. Thank we you. learned so much. You're just an amazing artist, and I'm I appreciate so that very, impressed. very much. Thanks, Liz. Okay. Thank you. And thank you, New York Film Academy for sponsoring the 2020 series and we will see you guys later. Be safe.